Hello and welcome back to Provost Gaming and Civilization Rising Tide, playing as the NSA. Alright, we apparently have a brawler. Uh, I guess we upgraded our infantry unit, and I didn't remember that, but he has officially touched down on land, so let's tell him to heal for a bit. And uh, our Tide Hunter can just go on alert for a bit. Not going to do much of anything. Let's kill off the Ripper. Yeah, so where we last, last left off, uh, we did gain access... Oh, there's some aliens right there. That's a bit of a danger. Um, we should probably back off... Oh, we found an alien nest, actually. That's extra dangerous for us. Let's back off one more tile, because I don't think that the aliens will be able to cross more than two tiles. Next turn, maybe we'll pop over here, destroy the alien nest, and back off. We're too close. He's going to attack us, most likely, so we'll try to avoid that. Anyway, last episode, we started up an agreement with uh, the Paul Australians and gained uh, access to some trade routes in a surprising number of our cities. One, two, and three. So all three of our normal cities. What about over here? These guys are still puppeted, turns out. Uh, we may just leave it as a puppet for now, actually. I don't know. Wouldn't be bad, honestly, to just straight up annex them, but we could wait. We can wait, it's fine. Either way, we gained three trade routes out of one agreement. I consider that to be a pretty good deal. Fifteen diplomatic capital for three trade routes? Yeah! I would gladly pay ten diplomatic capital for an extra trade route. Trade routes are important. Trade routes are awesome. Alright. Well, let's see. Looks like Chung Su and the Pan-Asian Cooperative made peace. Good for them. Good for them. Uh, this explorer, I didn't even realize there was still an alien skeleton over here. Hmm. Shows how much I'm paying attention. Alright, let's go ahead and pillage the alien nest. Get 25 food. And he's out of turns. Let's move a little bit over here. Let's attack the sea dragon. Yeah, the aliens absolutely hate me right about now. I really should consider just, just getting rid of them. Just get rid of them entirely. Who needs them? Let's build a work barge around the coral. Uh, you finally finished clearing out this miasma. So what should we build? Um, how's this city doing? Whoops. Eh, there we go. Let's see. We have our citizens placed there. Oh, come on. Uh, up here, yes, these are all good tiles to be working. This one's kind of meh. Or to place one right here, I would just get a farm which is extra food. Still not very good. Hmm. Not a lot I can gain out of this, to be honest. So what if I were to build an academy? Maintenance is an energy. Not too worried about it, though. Energy is probably fine. So let's go ahead and start building our first academy. Because those are exceptionally useful. Um, these manticores are a little bit too close. I could move out and set up for an attack, but then they'll probably just attack me because all aliens are hostile right now, so... Eh, we'll hold off until he moves back a tile, then maybe I'll use my rocket artillery to start clearing out some of the alien scum before they become much more of a threat. Looks like we're going to get our trade convoy out of Fjarin. Fjarin. Again, I, I feel the need to constantly apologize because I really just don't know how to speak any of these languages. I really don't. <sighs> Makes me look really silly, but again, I'm American, and Americans just don't speak those languages very often. Danish, Swedish, Norwegian. We just don't speak them. We don't. So, don't be surprised when we don't understand your grammatical system. Let's go ahead and pillage off this nest. 25 more uh, food for me. There's some floatstone. We really should consider expanding again at some point. I'm looking at this area and thinking that's a pretty good location. Got five strategic resources, which are worth a lot to me. I mean, a lot. Could be good. In the meantime, though, what else do we want to build in this new city? Do we want to go ahead and start moving again? We already have all the Farak sites, so we're probably okay for now. We should start getting some more buildings. Uh, Cyto Nursery would be kind of marginal, not amazing. Auto plants could be good for the production. No, Dry Dock, probably better, honestly. Could build it a little bit faster, too. Gene Garden, now that's really good. Three capital, three health, and a science. Very good. Laboratory, network, so all good. Observatory is okay. Armor Lab, we got a lot of really good buildings, honestly. We have a lot of really good buildings to take use of. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and build the Dry Dock. 
and start getting a little extra production because I want to start churning through as many of these buildings as possible, knowing how many there are that are useful. Wave of the Future quest decision. With the completion of the Hollow Suite, a recent holographic novella series depicting Old Earth has become immensely popular within the colony. Copyright claims, blah, blah, blah. Do we enforce a claim and get extra culture from Hollow Suites, which is pretty awesome? Or do we get it a free virtue right now? Oh, wow. That's actually kind of tough. Um, hmm. So right now we are making 70 per turn. Uh, I think this is probably the only city that has a Hollow Suite in it right now. Although I believe there's really no... Well, no, wait. You can only build in a city with, with uh, Firaxite, correct? So that means that Deep Castle and however you say this city can't actually build a Hollow Suite. So this and this. These are the only two cities that are actually able to build Hollow Suites in the first place. So the most I could get is four culture per turn. Whereas if I were to get a free virtue right now, I would get like several hundred free culture. Yeah, I think that getting the free virtue actually would probably be okay. Yeah, let's do that. Get a free virtue right here, right now. We can get an upgrade to our, the knowledge tree, which would actually give us a 10% culture bonus in every city, if I were to take something else from the knowledge tree itself. Uh, science penalty from numbers of cities for new technologies. Yeah, that's pretty substantial. Yes, networked data links is fantastic. Okay, hang on. Before I do this... So collaborative thought, for example, requires 1,599. Now, the way that civilization just works in general, Civilization Five, Civilization Beyond Earth, the more cities you found, the higher the cost is for every new virtue or technology. So every time I found a city, you're going to see this uh, number would go up. If I were to found one right now, it wouldn't be 751. It would be something much higher than that. Same thing happens with science. So right now, it is 1,599 science required to uh, earn collaborative thought. Once I pick this up, what happens? It goes to, oh, 1,516. It's not quite as drastic as I thought it was going to be. It exists. I mean, I basically just saved myself, what, 83? Yeah, 83 science by picking that up. And of course, that's going to be cumulative for, throughout. We did manage to save ourselves one turn. And uh, that will apply toward all technology in the future. But it is there. Not quite as drastic as I thought it was going to be, though. Not going to lie. Nonetheless, though, we did also just pick up a 10% boost to our culture. That should give us an extra, what, 6 or 7 culture per turn? That's pretty good. Not bad. We failed to siphon energy, but we were undetected. And we were detected siphoning energy from Freeland. That's a little less than optimal. Uh, let's go ahead and... Hmm... 65% chance of success for both of these. Might as well steal science. I mean, if they're going to have the exact same level of difficulty. Continue to siphon energy. I want to get my intrigue level up a little bit. Select a unit with some orders. Kill the sea dragon. There we go. Uh, okay. So this trade convoy, we have a mission, I believe, to trade with Hakima Station, which will give us four food, one production, and one culture. Probably worth it. There we go. Build an expedition at last sighting of Olivia Ross. Who the heck is Olivia Ross and why should I care? Unexpectedly, traders dealing with a Hikimi station have captured footage of a ragged woman living nearby in alien environs. Against all odd, odds, facial recognition confirms her to be the lost scientist Olivia Ross. Impossible. How could she have survived the stampede and lived alone and for so long in the wilderness? I'm going to be honest, I do not recall this quest chain. That's not to say that it doesn't exist, I just don't remember. Alright, there's a cave. Where's the cave? Is the cave right here? Where's the cave? Hang on. Is it in here? Oh! There is an underwater... <laughs> there's an underwater cave? Okay. We apparently have an underwater cave. Well, as soon as this guy is done with the alien skeleton expedition, which is just going to take a couple more turns, we'll send him over to the cave, and we'll continue with this quest chain. and see what happens. Alright, next turn. Doop de doop de doop. Looks like our NSA brawler is nearly done. Uh, okay. So the Pan Asian Cooperative has just gained a little bit more respect with me. Maybe, just maybe, they would be willing to ally with me because I think we'll have seven respect with them now. So let's see. Wait, I have to wait till the end of this turn. 
Quest received. Create a trade route from Camp Cascade. Why do they want me to keep creating all these trade routes? I mean, okay, sure, go ahead, but why? All right, diplomacy, Pan Asian Cooperative. Uh, change relationship. You have seven respect with me. You might be willing to ally. If we were to ally, what happens? New agreements are available and previously available agreements become more effective. That's very valuable to me because that would up the strategic resources to three production and three culture per turn instead of two each. Uh, trade between factions is more effective and if one faction goes to war, the other automatically goes. I'm okay with that. So are you sure? Yes. You accept. All right. We now have a better relationship with the Pan-Asian Cooperative. I don't care if the Koreans are unhappy with that. Doesn't matter at all. So, whatever. Growth potential. Uh, Ark is especially unhappy with that as well, it turns out. Who else is really going to be unhappy with this? Integer is actually very happy with this. Okay. That's good. Paul Australia apparently has no opinion. Alright, that's fine. Let's kill off the Rippers next. So, it's possible that Integer will be willing to ally with me at some point in the future as well. Possible. But not a guaranteed thing, obviously. We'll see. Could be a nice, uh, could be a nice three-way alliance in the future. Relationship with Ark is in jeopardy. You want to move toward Cooperative. So Integer now wants to improve things with me. This probably will upset Ark even more than they were before. Uh, I currently don't have any agreements with you, though, so not at this time. That's not to say that I won't ever do it, Integer, but at some point, maybe I will. I just don't have any particular bonus with that right now, because there's just no incentive to do so. I probably will just upset Ark to the point where they would just outright declare war on me for no darn good reason. It's happened before. It could happen again. Hello, Brawler. Let's start moving forward. We need to start squishing out some of these aliens. Uh, we'll continue to send our cruiser to explore more of the ocean blue. You want civil infrastructure, and I would get 10 per turn. Pretty sure it normally would be 15 per turn. Again, Integer does seem to get a discount. Still, that's good for me. I am okay with that, so goodbye. You want reserve army. I also think that looks good. So, sure. Let's start getting 69 diplomatic capital per turn. Maybe we should upgrade another personal infinity. Do we want to upgrade for more global health, or do we want production for military units? We have 381 diplomatic capital right now. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I'm going to go for the production of military units. Production of military units is good, 5%. It does add up after a while. And it looks like we don't have a lot to build in this city beyond a launch complex, which I don't care about. We could do city development, but really, who wants to do that? Let's start building more brawlers. Let's get some more military units. See if we can earn some respect. You gotta respect the North Sea Alliance. Don't be dissing on us. We're, uh, we're a powerful naval force, didn't you know? We've already conquered a city. So, don't mess with us. What's this achievement unlocked? Lingua Franca. French language? I don't know. Wonder completed. Miracles of the divine made manifest, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Thakurite epistles. Six, two through four. What is that? Huh. Well, it looks like I'm getting some respect. At least with my ally, I got some respect. Everyone else unhappy? Nope, it seems like everyone likes this. Why? Okay, I don't understand the formula. Why are some AIs totally okay with me building certain wonders and not okay with others? Is it just a matter of envy? Right? Is it just, just that they wanted those wonders for themselves and they're mad? In which case, does that mean they didn't care about this wonder and therefore I just earned respect? I don't know how that works. It's something. Let's build a trade convoys there. Don't need another one here. Uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves an auto plants. Really crank out that production, and then we'll start booking it through all the rest of the uh, all the rest of the buildings in position. Actually, this city. I'm producing a brawler. I'm actually going to change this. I just realized I do need one more trade convoy in this city, and we can complete our camp cascade mission by doing so. Let's tell this brawler to heal for a little bit. It looks like the aliens have been more or less leaving us alone. We did just get some affinity XP towards supremacy, which is nice. And we discovered an artifact. Pressurized magma sample. Ooh. So hang on. That's a... Oh, that's still alien. I was kind of hoping that was going to be progenitor, but it was not. All right. Alien. Doop, 
Doop, doop, what happens? We get old voice archives. 10% yields when at war. 10% yields of what? Of just everything as a general rule? What does that mean? 10% yields? Old voice archives. I don't know what that means. Counter battery fire. Siege unit ability unlocked. Lower an enemy's de unit's defense by 20% for the remainder of your turn. What? Really? I gain special abilities for my siege units. They can reduce the defense of a unit and then I can just focus fire on it. I don't think that's something I really would make use of. It's a unit. It doesn't say it doesn't say anything about enemy cities, it just says enemy unit. But still, that's interesting. Uh, what about this? Ground penetrating LIDAR. Tesseract targeting. Cities can bombard through terrain obstacles. Eh. Okay. There's the old voice archives. Now that's interesting. So I could spend my really nice pristine artifact to get the old voice archives, or I could say, no, let's just use only my cheap artifacts and just get the building for nothing. I'm gonna do that, actually. These guys don't produce a massive bonus in and of themselves, and I kind of want to know what they mean by 10% yield, so let's unlock the old voice archives. Bam. This library of cultural knowledge serves as a public record of life on Earth. Uh, blah blah blah. Small taste of life on Earth. Sounds like a purity building, to be honest, but okay. So there goes our aphorisms for practical people. Oh wait, that's just citing what this quote is supposedly from, ha ha ha. For Supremacy apparently doesn't access much of anything at all. So, Old Earth, 10% city yields when at war. What does that mean? You just talking about this stuff? Is this considered a yield? I don't see anything that says anything about that being the terminology you would use. Uh, is there anything about... Yield. No. Hmm. Not sure exactly what that would be defined as, but that is interesting. Oh well, we did just unlock another building type for reasons, so... Okay, cool. Why not? Let's move on to the next turn. Uh, looks like our... What are they called now? Screamers are still patrolling around, which is fine. Just fine. This uh, trade route should be finished. Shortly, anyway. Oh, good. New technology has been researched. So we just unlocked the Nano Hive, which is a hybrid unit. Harmony Supremacy hybrid unit requires titanium. It is invisible. Strength of 28. Move of 2. Deployable group of robotic combat micro drones that automatically damage enemies adjacent to the unit. Interesting. So it doesn't necessarily have to attack by itself. You just position it next to your enemies, and they just start taking damage passively. Not sure that's amazing, but it's interesting at least. I'd be kind of curious to build in and just see what it looks like. The Precog Project, Xenomass costs, um, military units can achieve two additional levels of veterancy. That actually has some really good synergies with the personality traits that we've already picked up as far as uh, unit experience generation, so that's pretty good. We'll probably want that. Uh, and we also now have a passive culture bonus from Array Improvements. What is an Array Improvement? Do I have that? We did just reach level 6 Supremacy, so now we have level 6 Harmony and level 6 Supremacy. And we're starting to see aesthetically that the cities are kind of changing. You have a Supremacy Sector, you have um, a Harmony Sector. I was kind of hoping that if we had a hybrid affinity, that maybe you would get a totally new aesthetic. Kind of like we do for our military units. So for example... These guys, actually, wow, yeah, perfect, see? So we can upgrade these right now to a Tier 3 Harmony Supremacy unit, and that's what they look like. It's kind of silly looking. Uh, Hellions, though. Alright. Sure, why not? Uh, anyway, I was kind of hoping that there would be a unique aesthetic for cities based on a hybrid affinity. It doesn't look like there is, but uh, you never know. It uh, might just take, take another turn to upgrade. That's interesting looking, though. Huh. Alright. Well, our Brawlers Tier 3 are no longer necessary. Uh, do we want additional damage when flanking, or do we want all-terrain costs one movement? I would rather have fasting, faster moving units. Flanking is good, but it's honestly so much work for me, I just usually don't bother. So cool, we'll just have them move a little bit faster. Let's get these Screamers upgraded to Vortex. 
It's kind of cool looking. Reveal invisible enemy units within two tiles, or automatically heal every turn. There are a surprising number of invisible units. The ability to heal every turn could be kind of nice, though. They're both really useful, actually. Situationally, I should say. They're both good. I'm going to go for the automatically heal every turn. I feel like that's more likely to come into play. Wow. So we're picking up an additional 24 strength. Good grief. My screamers, now vortexes, just became really strong. Where'd you go? There you are. 48 strength. We just doubled their strength. And we're only at level 6 affinity. This is really early on in the game. But because we went for a hybrid affinity, we now have some really powerful melee units. Melee naval units, I should say. Dang, these guys are good. Wow. Wow. I kind of like hybrid affinities. I feel like that's a really easy goal to go for, and it is pretty darn potent. I should just take a look at something. Hang on real quick. Um, uh, quests and victory conditions. Let's suppose I wanted to go for, let's say, a, either domination or maybe just a... Uh, let's say emancipation. Let's suppose I wanted to go for an emancipation victory. Launch laser comm satellite. Is this a supremacy one? Con uh, control all original. This is uh, purity, I think. So I need... Or contact. Contact? Discover the progenitor signal. Laser comm satellite. What's the laser comm satellite? Um... I should probably just look this up the old-fashioned way over here. This is probably a little bit faster. Laser comm. Satellite. There we go. Orbital units. It is... Orbital networks is the technology that I want. Orbital networks, if I wanted to go for that. Let's suppose that I did. Orbital networks. Where are you? There you are. Communications and orbital networks. All right. Well, let's suppose I went for communications. I would get the TACnet hub. That's an orbital unit. Don't really care. Com Relay, another orbital unit. Don't really care. Command Center is a good defensive building. Feed Site Hub, okay. That's alright, actually. Getting addition, uh, additional science from trade routes could be good. Sonar Net. May only be constructed in aquatic cities. Really? Aquatic cities have the ability to reveal... Okay, so by the time that a Tide Hunter or any sort of submarine unit got close enough to do damage to your city, you'd be able to reveal it with a Sonar Net. Uh, okay. Well, let's go for communications. I kind of want to see what's going to happen. Let's start making some predict, um, some uh, progress toward a victory condition of some sort and see what we can do. Uh, old voice archives, precog projects. Let's, let's start working toward things like the tidal turbine, start getting my energy production up there a little bit more. And this trade convoy should probably trade with Camp Cascade. And there we go. 20% yield from trade with Hakima Station for 20 turns. So this station is giving us additional yield, even though we just traded with Camp Cascade for our mission. Why Hakimo Station wanted that? I don't know, but they did. So there we go. Let's start moving our Hellions forward. 48 strength. These are going to be some rather beastly melee units now. Kind of proud of that. Let's go toward the caves for our expedition. Find out who Olivia Wes is. I think that was her name. Yeah, these here aliens ain't got nothing. Ain't got nothing on me now, so cool. We'll be prepared for that. But that's all going to have to wait until next turn. So thank you guys for watching. This has been Provis with Civilization Rising Tide. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I, as always, will be sure to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.